and now my head's not cut off. I have a lot of people who've asked me about sauces. So I have some really easy, really fast, very delicious sauces that I use on a regular basis. Okay, let's, all right, take some fresh spinach. And what I did, I took some fresh spinach and I am steaming it in my steamer pot on top of the stuff. So I put the water in the bottom, put the spinach in the top, and I wait till it starts to boil and it. When it's nice and soft, and you don't want any of the color to go out of it, and that spinach is ready, and then you turn the heat off, and it will. you have melted butter. If you have fresh garlic, and I'm out right now, you take garlic and you smash it and you dice it up really good and you put that. I'm going to take this bowl out. I don't know where all my little bowls seem to have disappeared. So you take two tablespoons like this. This is just so it doesn't taste like spinach. Then you want to get about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon, depending on how much you like garlic. And you're going to taste that minced garlic, which is a Close that up. I'm going to use that in a little bit for something else. And you want to whisk that around really good. And that melted butter. Now you can do more butter if you like. I actually have enough here where I can make it braise, so it's really good and buttery. Butter's natural. It's not like, you know, the uh, margarine stuff that doesn't digest. Margarine is basically gets a plastic. Did you know that? Yeah, it's plastic. So I've got, we'll do three teaspoons. Three teaspoons of, or tablespoons of melted butter. One half teaspoon of the fresh grated or pre garlic and some dill. Now, it's the equivalent of a quarter of a teaspoon. So, quarter of a teaspoon of dill. Okay. And then a teaspoon of thyme. The thyme is what Makes, I've got all my little herbs out here. Where's my time? I had it. There it is. I keep looking for a different container. And a teaspoon of thyme. Put that in butter just like that. Excuse me. Nose is itching. It's allergy season. And I'm starting to sound like I've got allergies. Fresh, fresh garlic. Well, that is fresh grated garlic. But it's just in a jar. Spinach. And you toss it. Toss your fresh steamed spinach. This spinach is almost finished. So it's got, once it comes to a boil, it takes maybe about, mm, maybe four minutes or so. No, my, <laughs> I have tuna fish because he loves tuna fish. And when I looked at the can, it's not tuna fish. It's a uh, plant product that's a uh, tuna fish butter sauce, saute, took the spinach. I didn't know that it's there. He'll, he'll think of something else. Okay, chicken. <clears throat> this is a plate that I have. And actually what it does is defrost your food for you at room temperature. The way it's constructed, what it's made out of, is like, I don't even know where I got this thing. I just know it works ago. And they were frozen solid. They're not anymore. And it didn't even take them two hours. Depends on how thick the meat is, how long it takes. Now, this is one of those little knife skills to get the skin off of the chicken. You lift it up, and you take your knife, and you go just under it, and right, is it right away? <clears throat> Put it in a freezer bag. That's what I said. Put it in a freezer bag. And it'll stay in a freezer bag. You use a vacuum seal bag up to six months. And you're going to use this for chicken stock. I'm going to actually use vegetable stock for this dish. It's just a dish I just came up with. So I'm going to put that in there. I'll take the skin off of this one. This is a baked dish. It gets baked at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. 
and you cover it with aluminum foil so that it doesn't dry out, it keeps all the moisture in there, and then the the, uh, the herbs that all get mixed in with it actually kind of gel with it. So I'm gonna preheat the oven. For that. And it's okay that I made it this much in advance because it's not gonna get any more cooked, it's, it's finished. Now you turn the chicken over and then you find where that cartilage is at the breast, in this case on the breast, where it is, and just cut into it along the bone. Good bone. It's no big scientific, you know, fancy thing. And as you do that, if you pull it back just a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit more. This. And now. This is why bone chicken is so expensive at the store. Someone stand there and do this. And you got to do it so that you don't waste a whole lot of meat. And with that skin, you're going to put these bones. This is how you do really great chicken stock. It's from the bones that have a little bit of meat on it. And this next one, I always start, I don't know, because I'm left-handed. Some people will start at the ribs and cut from the ribs over. And get that knife right up next to that bony part. Pull that back. When you get it started, you can start to see where the ribs are and along the spine on a fish. Now these call it that I use for this fish is also really great for fish, except I would add one more ingredient to that. And that's a little bit of lemon juice. Um, Something about citrus and fish works. So here's my chicken. That's uh, basically chicken filet. <laughs> and I'm going to put that on this cutting board. You're probably wondering why I have two different cutting boards. I don't like to cut raw meat on wood. I'll cut it on the, you know, the lucite kind of cutting boards. But I do not like to cut it on wood because wood is porous and I don't want meat particles getting into the wood. That's just my thing. I, there's probably nothing wrong with it. I mean, I, I scrub it down there anyway, but I'm not a big fan of doing that. Now, as far as this, I want not, I want thin strips. I want it to be thin strips because I want to serve this over rice. Or I may put it over some pasta. So I'm going to make thin sliver slices of this chicken. I'm going to get that out of there. I want to put it, throw it in that bowl for a temporary place for it. Sorry, Miss Luna. I have a bag right here. And I'll vacuum seal it afterwards to make chicken stock. I'm actually going to use vegetable broth for this to give it more of a veggie taste. There we go. Now, the other ingredients that I'm going to use in this dish are the sofrito, which is a tomato base right here. Most of the times you'll see it used with pork or beef. I use it with chicken. And I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but that's what I use it for. So I'm going to slice this up. Some nice little, this is great for like little thin tenderloins or for fajitas. This is how you would cut your chicken or fajitas. Chicken strips, cook them up. You can also uh, do these in the wok. Or a uh, Chinese Google Guy fan. With some thin strip, strips of chicken, some broth, some vegetables, and all that. And I'm going to throw a new one out here for you that's going in this dish, believe it or not. Uh, I don't know how many of you all like artichokes, but if you like artichokes, then you will love parts of home. Now, I had no idea because I've never had them. And I knew what they sort of kind of tasted like, but I didn't know for sure. So I thought, well, let me get a can of Hearts of Palm. And I read the can and what they just said, it reminded me of artichokes. I go, well, I like artichokes. And they're canned or jarred in the same kind of brown as an artichoke is. And you know what? They taste just like artichokes. Hearts of Palm tastes just like artichokes. It has a lot of uh, vitamin benefits, vitamin C and 
vitamin A, I believe is what I read. And uh, so it's one of those healthy things that I've just never used a lot of, and it's in a lot of Italian dishes, a lot of Brazilian dishes, as a matter of fact. And I'm going to be doing a Brazilian dish on my next video that's done with shrimp and some wonderful herbs and spices. And we've had steak the other night. We don't want to eat too much red meat. So we're going to do the chicken route for this meal. And I'm going to put those in here. Now, once I get this chicken all sliced up in these little quarter inch thin slices, I'm going to toss it in some herbs. Some people say herbs, it's herbs to me, but I know there's an H in front. And to complement the chicken. Now I could make this with a spicy sauce or not so spicy. But I'm thinking, I'm just going to go middle of the road. I just want it to be flavorful. There's going to be a little bit of Parmesan cheese thrown in on this. And I don't know how Parmesan's going to be with hearts of palm, but we're going to find out. If it's artichokes, it's going to be fine. And it's just sprinkled on the top at the end. It doesn't go in the actual dish dish. So I've got my slivers of chicken. Reason why I do it this way is because it will cook faster. And it takes on the seasonings a lot better. So <clears throat> to make the sauce, and it's going to be a sofrito based sauce, by the way. So I did not take out my tomato paste, and I should have. So let me get my tomato paste out of here. And I need a smaller bowl, but not too small. Oh, well, my mixing bowls have all disappeared. I have no idea where they went. So I may have to buy another set. So with that, again, melted butter, one, two, three, four. It's basically four. A small red onion. I chopped it up. I'm putting it in here. I'm going to let this chicken kind of like take on some of that oniony flavor. I would use shallots, but I have onion. Onion works. Now, there's some of these pieces of chicken back there. So for the sauce, let me get this nasty board out of the way. I'm doing the four tablespoons of melted butter. <laughs> hands are kind of yucky. Let's get my hands washed off here. That's better. I need to remember to have a wet towel out here. I like that. And then, sofrito. I'm going to put in here one, two, three, four. It's, I do this four, four tablespoons per pound. That's about a pound of meat. <clears throat> I'm going to stir that together. like this. Now you can use tomato sauce if you don't, not, you know, because Cerrito has its own little herbs and stuff in it. It's so darn good. And then I add to this a half a cup of vegetable broth. Ta -da. To start. Now if I want to thicken it up, and it will thicken up, I want to make this more tomatoey. That's when I add the paste. So I'm going to do a half a cup of vegetable broth. Just like this. Okay. 
and the cold vegetable rolls makes his butter go, oh, I'm going to chow up now. So that's going to do this little thing. Okay. And to this, a tablespoon of olive oil. Keep some moisture in the meat. And some cilantro leaves. Fresh. I'm saving the French fresh for the shrimp. <laughs> Teaspoon of those. And then I'm going to see if this actually does need the vinegar in it. It may. May not. Actually, it doesn't. That's a good thing. Now, to make it the sauce. <laughs> That's where the tomato paste comes in. Okay? Because when you bake this, you want it to be a thick, saucy kind of thing. The tomato paste is what makes it the sauce, the thick sauce. And I didn't open it ahead of time, like a silly me. And the can opener is somewhere. Oh, there you are. Now what I'm going to serve with this on the side is some black beans. But in the black beans, I'm going to put in diced serrano peppers for a little heat. It's kind of like a spicy chicken hollandaise kind of thing. I haven't made a name for it. I just... I just want to make it. Sometimes these little cans do not want to open. There we go. So you do the tomato paste a teaspoon at a time because it will thicken the sauce up pretty quick. So I'm going to take, since I have about two cups in here, I'm going to take two teaspoons of the salt paste, tomato paste. One, and two. Okay, I'm going to whisk that up. And this is definitely going to go over top of pasta and not rice. So I get some gluten-free pasta. And now I've got this really rich, delicious sauce going here. Now the other thing you can add to this, and I don't have any because we are out right now, is a little bit of white wine. The wine cooks off, but it leaves an impression. So this is still a little on the watery kind of side. So I'm going to add one more teaspoon of the tomato paste. I think we want to stick with four, so we'll do four of everything. Four butter. Or tomato paste. One fourth cup of the vegetable um, broth. Now this is a sauce. It looks like a, a thick soup. And that's how you want it to look. Uh, if y'all can see, that's like a, it's like a thick soup. Like a bisque. If you've ever had tomato bisque, that's exactly what this is like. Now, to get ready to cook it, you need your hearts of palm. Now, you can leave the hearts of palm down if you want. I'm putting them in it because I've tasted these by themselves. And this is the butter stuff spinach. I don't want to forget about that. And if you've never seen them before, they look like little logs. They look just like this. Like logs. And they're in a brine. And you just thinly slice them. And you can eat them right out of the... They're so good. Right out of there. You can stir fry them. Put them in a dish like this. Bake them. 
And this is going to be absolutely fabulous. This sauce is um, Brazilian inspired because of some of the recipes that I have. So this is when I kind of tweaked it to be my own way. Instead of doing artichokes, I'm doing parts of palms. Yeah. My itch, nose is itching like crazy. Now I want the pan that I'm going to put this all in. I want to make sure that I spray it down with either a nonstick spray or a drizzle some olive oil. I prefer to drizzle the olive oil. So I'm going to drizzle about one to two tablespoons of olive oil along the bottom of this pan. It's a 13 by 9 pan. Just kind of Drizzle it in there. But olive oil makes it more the Italianish kind of thing. And then what I didn't do with this chicken was I need some rosemary, about a teaspoon, to rub into it. Okay, this is really gonna be make it really flavorful. Get that rosemary in there. All right, I'm getting my hands on yucky again, huh? So I put the rosemary in with a little bit of red onion that's in there. I had some diced red onion, so I figured I'd use it. I prefer thinly sliced shallots. Right now, they're not in the pantry. So the rosemary's on the chicken, and I have also chives. I'm growing garlic chives. These are regular chives. So I'm just gonna sprinkle the chives in there. They're nice and dark chives, they're really, really good ones. And so the chives and the, the onion, the red onion, are gonna complement one another. And then I'm gonna put it in this pan. I'm gonna spread it out into a thin layer, okay? A thin layer of that chicken. And goes like this. Now, if you're watching your salt intake, don't put salt on it. If you want to, you can season it with just a little bit of the Mediterranean pink sea salt. I usually do that after it's cooked. I don't like to cook it with it in it. Then take your hearts of palm and place on top. And just like this. I need to cut a little bit more of the will. I'm thinking I should cut at least half of one up because I like the parts of palm to cover the chicken. I have a short little piece in here that I was snacking off of yesterday. Look at these. These slices are about an eighth of an inch thick. So it feels like you're actually biting into something. Yeah. Sweet and sweet. Correlation, I guess. But I was surprised at how tasty these are. And so we've got a little nice girl. We've had a new food that we're trying out and a new sauce. So here is the sofrito sauce. That's what I'm going to cut. This is, now I could pour this on here and let it sit overnight as a marinade. Any of the sauces that I make, I also use as marinades. Now, the only other thing that I would do with this, is I'm gonna like drizzle around to the other side. So you end up with about two cups of sauce. I could let this sit overnight and it would be absolutely to die for. When you do something like that, be sure to tenderize your meat. Take that mallet and Doctor, take a white towel and then put it um, in the fridge to marinate overnight. Now, after tasting this sauce, oh goodness, that's delicious. <laughs> There's a couple of things I can do to kind of give it a little zip. And I've done this before. There's balsamic vinegar. It gives a little tang, a little pop, which is good with the artich or Artichoke. The palms, the hearts of palm, it's just kind of drizzled a little. 
just a little bit on top, balsamic vinegar. That's just so that it gets in there. And then to top this off. Before I cover it with foil, see if I find it in here. I had it out earlier and then I put it back. I thought I put it back. No, I didn't. It's on the counter. See, I had it myself. Freshly grated Parmesan is always best. Right now I'm out because I've been doing a lot of other kind of things. Freshly grated uh, Parmesan is perfect. Cover it. Cover it with this grated Parmesan. Now, other times I would add mushrooms in here because I love my mushrooms, but this is about, I'd say, about a half a cup of grated Parmesan all over this. I mean, all over this. I'm going to cover this with foil, and I'm going to bake it in the oven. I'm going to bake it for about 40 minutes, between 40, 30, 45 minutes. And when that, when I take piece of the chicken and it's like cooked through which at 350 it'll be about about 30 to 45 minutes that is ready to serve over whatever or just eat it like that put it in a bowl eat it like this this is my hmm my sofrito heart of palm dinner dish i'll give it a better name and i'll put all of the ingredients in the uh comments below if you like this kind of off the wall, kind of like hearts of palm. I've never tried that. You have to try it. This stuff, like, you can eat out of can. You don't have to do anything to it. And then give me a, if you like my video, tell me you like it. Put it in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know if there's any other kind of sauces you want to see. This was a tomato based sauce. The other was a butter sauce for spinach that you just drizzle over the spinach butter, garlic, thyme, and a little bit of dill. That's it. And this is going to really surprise my husband because he has no idea what I'm cooking. But, and I'll also take a picture of it and put it as the thumbnail for you guys so you can see the finished product. But I wish you guys would come over and have a bite. But if you're ever in a neighborhood, you can. But remember, when you come in a kitchen, that means you take the shoes off. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm Crafty Zoo and I'm the Barefoot Country Cook. Hey, subscribe. I'd love to hear more from you guys and what you would like to try and would like for me to cook for you so that you can try it. Okay? God bless. Come back and see me and let's do some barefoot cooking again.